Leo. That, I don't know if it's for the old moonshine shine. Oh, wow. Okay. Hello, hello. I wonder what this reading is going to be about. I never quite know. Ever. I never quite know. I want this crystal to sit up, but... There we go. Okay. Okay. So. Cancer. Oh, I'm already getting hot. Frick. Okay. So. What I'm hearing is that it's like a scene, a scene wants to play out. I'm not really sure what that means. I'm guessing that the cards, the cards want to lay, uh, they want to lay their scene here in Verona where we lay our scene. That is the beginning of Romeo and Juliet. Tragic story of two idiots falling in love with each other and then killing themselves because of it. Whoa. Okay. They apparently want to talk about a tale of all in reverse. Six of Swords in reverse. King of Wands in reverse. High Priestess in reverse. Empress in reverse. Or Emperor in reverse. And you know what I see right away? Is I see three men and one woman. Three men and a lady. Isn't that a movie? This isn't a movie. This is real life, people. Real life. Three men and a woman. And two children. That's what I see. First one to complain leaves with the blood stains. Yeah. <sighs> Something. Somebody's eight of swords. Like confined into something. And what I believe. Oh, look it. You showed up. Wow, look at that. Leo. You showed your face. First one to complain leaves with the blood stains. You know what I'm saying? With a lion. <laughs> okay. Okay, so somebody wants to tell a story, and there is a little bit of a story here. So from it looks like somebody was sent away. Okay. Somebody was sent away. It's almost like an older child was sent away so then two younger children could reap the benefits. Oh, you know what that, it almost kind of like reminds me of um, if, if you got into a, like some type of separated situation, right? And your parents separated and you were like 16 or 17 and then your mom or your dad hooks up with this like super young person and then they have a kid. And then all of a sudden the dad, the stepdad or the stepmom starts going like, oh, you know, maybe kind of a little bit King of Staten Island. I don't know if you've seen that movie, but a little bit like, what's this adult doing here? We've got kids to take care of. They can go out on their own and get their own jobs and get their own lives and get their own shit. But the thing is, is that person does not look that old and they're going to choppy waters with everything that's been said staring right at them okay so you tell me does that look like a good situation to be sending somebody out and into reverse no and i actually once man i have this client and the way that she spoke about um her son and she wasn't there with her son when he was moving, so she sent him a Walmart gift card so then he could go and get all these cleaning supplies so he could clean his apartment. I think it was a trailer, actually. He was going to move into a trailer for work or something. And she's like, well, how do I set my son up? I don't want to set him up to fail, but I'm not there to do everything for him, so I'm just going to send him the money so then he can buy everything for himself so he doesn't fail. 
Like, that's apparent, okay? This stupid idiot, okay, which is, I swear, if, if you want to know how some readings work, watch the movie that I say in the reading. It usually depicts characters very good. This, I'm getting King of Staten Island, right? Um, Bill Burr is in it. Um, a few other kind of well-known people. Anyways, oh, I, I, Steve Buscemi, he makes an appearance. And um, anyways... Bill Burr becomes this, Bill Burr would be the king of wands here. The cops drive by again. Wow, people are getting busted. So anyways, Bill would be the king of wands in this scenario. He hooks up with this woman whose older son is a schizophrenic, 25-year-old, still living at home, trying to make his way as a tattoo artist. Okay, and Bill's all of a sudden like, well, you know, my kid's got to get walked to school. So I think, I forget what his name is in the movie, but he, he gets the kid to start walking his kids to school. And then he kicks him out onto his ass and says he has to get out of the house. And I'm thinking like, you know, it makes the, it actually, watch the movie because this, Bill Burr actually becomes a really, like, he becomes like my favorite character of all time. He goes from such a dick to like amazing. But anyways... Um, it kind of seems like that. It's like somebody hot and heavy comes in and sees somebody in a position and goes, no, I don't want you in that position. You've been there long enough. You can go. And you're like, who's this motherfucker? Like, he's not been around. He doesn't know anything. She doesn't know anything. Why is she just all of a sudden telling me I got to get up and I got to leave? Where, where do I go? You're just going to send me off into the world with nothing, Right. Which is why this high priestess in reverse is here. Because this person that did this, this king of wands that did, or yeah, this king of wands that did this to the six of swords, okay, they did not use their intuition. They were not planted. They were not grounded. They did not follow their heart. They did not follow what they were supposed to do. They just bulldozed because they saw somebody and they didn't like it and they wanted to get rid of it. And usually people who do that are people that are a very, um, they're very lacked in confidence and they don't feel like the role they can do with somebody else watching them. They always feel, people who are lack confidence always feel like some type of object is going to destroy their path somehow, right? Because they're not grounded enough in that path to make anything worth themselves almost right they're not making anything themselves they're just living off of other things right so it's like this person they saw something and they didn't they didn't think to ask about it right like like what if this person was schizophrenic what if they were sick what if they had scoliosis you know what if they had a, a, a brain disease right what if they had a really bad time with obesity what if this person couldn't be alone and the mother or the pe the person, oh, well, it's going to be the emperor in reverse here, guaranteed. The person that they were living with should have known what was wrong with sending this person out onto their own. They weren't supposed to be sent out on their ass by themselves, okay? So this emperor is, is this high priestess basically right here. No, actually, no, I believe the, the emperor would be this, this king of wands. Um, no direction themselves, no fire themselves, right? Um, they're not planted, so they want to take something from somebody else, right? They want to kick somebody else out of a home or somewhere, you know, out of something, confine them up, bully them up with words and send them out in their way so then they can take over some type of emprise. Em emprise. I'm, I think I'm trying to say enterprise and emperor together, that's what dyslexia does. It puts two words together. It's very fun. If you know, if you can learn how to work with dyslexia, it, it puts words together and it's awesome because you make new words all the time. So yeah, this person, um, it, I think, I think for you, this took a lot of strength because doing this to somebody, sending them out onto the streets, if you didn't end up on the streets and you you found a way to go from pillar to post and from, from couch to couch trying to make a way, or if you managed to keep an apartment this whole time, something was premature. That's, that's what I'm getting. Something was premature. And, and, you know, I watched this video of this 98 year old man 
who drives his 73-year-old son to his cancer appointments and to go get his blood work done. Because in the end of the day, yeah, his son might be 70, but he's still his dad. And when you're a dad and you love your kid, you should be taking care of your kid until the end. Why just because they get married or just because they have kids, why does it matter? Like I grew up with this girl. She was so close to her dad. She ended up having two kids, right? And my sister and I, um, we, her, it was her tradition. My sister always wanted to go to Wonderland on her birthday. It was a tradition that, that she wanted to start. So we started going every year on her birthday and we went for years. And one year I saw my friend from high school there. She was there with her dad. Okay. She was there with her dad. She left her kids. Her kids were at school. She went with her dad and her dad's girlfriend. Uh, he, her dad and, and this girl just started dating. And we met up and it was like high school again. It was like her dad was paying for everything. Brooke and I were just running around the park with my sister. Oh my God. It was so much fun. And, and to me, he still treated her like, I mean, when she's a mom, she's a mom of two boys and her dad still treated her like a dad. You know, they, they still went out and had lunch together, just the two of them. They still made moments together. And I remember seeing them in high school. Her dad took her to go get her first abortion. Okay, that's how close she was with her dad. I did that shit behind all my parents' back, and I was in my 20s, okay? She went at 16 with her dad. That's how close they were. And I always remember thinking, man, I wish my dad was that close with me because they had the same sort of personalities, but the difference was is that my friend's dad never put pussy on a pedestal. He always put kids first, and his wives were always fine with that. Now I think he's on his third wife. And I mean, he's got great relationships with all of them. If it doesn't work out because he puts too much into his kids, well, guess what? Hit the fucking road. His kids come first. So shall it be. Even though his kids have kids, he still treats them like kids. And if they had to come home, trust me, they always do. Okay? That guy doesn't kick anybody out of his house. He doesn't care how old they are. So I feel like this king of wands, he did this. He bullied right? He pushed something out of the way so then he could have this. Oh, domestic bliss. You don't kick a kid out of the nest to get their fucking wife or to get their husband, okay? Like, it just doesn't happen that way. You don't kick your kids out. It doesn't matter how old they are. And I can't stress that enough. Your kid is your kid until the end. You don't kick them out. You don't tell them to go live in a shelter. You don't, you have, I don't care if they steal from you every day. They're your kid. You made them. You raised them. You fucking grew them. That's your shit. That's your seed. That's your blood. Anything they're doing, it's most likely they either fucking learn from you. They learned while they were around you and you could have nipped in the butt, but you didn't. And I'm talking, maybe this could be your parents too, right? Everything that you're doing, they could have nipped in the butt. They could have, your parents could stop you from going to prison. They could stop you from creating fucking events in your life that are catastrophic, that never, you know, that, that build up that rage and, and then your life can never be the same, right? Your parents are supposed to be the ones that protect you, not the ones that lie, Go in limbo and start hiding the truth so then they can have a house all to themselves. That's not a parent, right? And if they want to try to say they're a parent, awesome. That's great. I don't, I, anybody's, anybody's definition of a parent is their own definition of a parent. But you all have to die and explain what you did for that job. Because being a parent is a job and it's your number one job. Whether you want to, to put your GM job first or your factory job first or your fucking rock star career first, your kids are your first priority and they're always going to be. So somebody kicking somebody out of the nest when they weren't supposed to go? First one to complain leaves with the blood stain. Remember I said that? Damn right I'm a maniac. You better watch your back because I'm fucking up your program. Okay? This is. He complained. It was the king of wands who made the first complaint. And your best bet was to stay awake, motherfucker. Because you kicked somebody out and now I bet you, I, I bet you this person now doesn't even sleep. And so shall it be. Whatever they did, and, and if somebody does something that, that puts somebody else's life into danger for no reason out of literally guilt, selfishness, sex, 
right? Little fucking poke and smoke literally, honestly, is going to get it back ten, tenfold, right? You put somebody's kid at risk for something that's considered a deadly sin. Let's see what happens to you. I'm going to use my cards because they're special. They're made for the monsters. What happens to this king of wands in reverse? King of swords in reverse. Emperor in reverse. Hot in reverse. Ooh, they got to go to work. I feel like this person has to go to work in hell now. Dana Scully, facts. Poison. Oh no, this person's getting poisoned because that's the scales. This person deserves to get poisoned. They deserve to get what they gave. And like they say, man, don't do the fucking crime if you can't do the time. I mean, you're a coward, right? This is a whole twist of events. This is a twist of events in reverse. This is something that now has to unravel, right? It's like something's been, been wound up so tight because of sending this person out on their own. It, the energy has been wound up so tight that it has to unravel now. And when that unravels, do you know how long it's been pent up and pressed in there? I, I released a plant once that these gardeners had, had just massacred and, and I released it and it, it right away started producing babies. As soon as I released its roots, these, these farmers wanted this plant to look so fucking pretty and I went, there's something wrong, there's something wrong. And I dug into the roots finally and I realized what they did to make this plant look so pretty. And the second I removed it, it produced babies almost instantly. It could grow, it could move. It didn't have this elastic around it, keeping it all fluffed up and pretty and beautiful for the next customer to come and buy because everything is a fucking window shop. Everything is, oh, I want this. I want this, I want this, I want this. Why? I want a new pair of pants because these ones have a hole in them. Sew it up. Fucking go buy new shit because shit falls apart. Ooh, accidents. What time are we at? I can't see the time. Accidents, you know, accidents happen. That's the thing. And accidents happen to people who, who weave people up into energies thinking that what they're doing is okay because they are the king of the house. I'm a king. I'm an emperor. I'm allowed to do whatever I want. I'm allowed to rip this person up and wrap them all up in my words. And I'm allowed to do whatever I want because I'm an adult. And it's like, yeah, okay. It just took this lion just a little bit of time to realize what exactly it was that you did. Right? And once that lion unravels, and they realize that they've been bullied and pushed away by somebody who didn't even listen to what they were supposed to do. They just wanted a house to themselves. Everybody experiences accidents. Sometimes those accidents are a little bit worse than others. And sometimes they're just accidents and that's it. And you just move on with your day. And sometimes there are accidents that you have to spend cleaning up after for a month. And sometimes there are accidents that cost people their life. First one to complain leaves with the blood stain, which is the king of wands. Fred Durst, I tell you, when I channel music as I'm doing this, it, it matches perfectly. Like I swear, I almost want you to watch King of Staten Island just to get the boundaries of what a male or a woman does to get a child out of the house so then they can have a kingdom, even though they didn't, it's not theirs. They're just trying to steal it from a kid. Stealing a kingdom from a kid. Wow. I think that's going to be the name of the video. Thanks for watching. I hope it resonates. And if you want a personal reading, you can go down to that description box because my email is there. Or you can head over to the about section. And all my prices and services with yours truly, Whitney Moonshine, are right there. Peace out. Welcome to the channel. Trauma and Tarot.